Yo, what's up everyone? This episode, we're going to be talking about how we can basically create a list of mazes and solve multiple mazes. And the first step of this is to create a maze class so then we can easily work with maze objects, which is just an instance of that class. If you need the object oriented information, I have a bunch of videos on Java object oriented programming in my Java series. So I'm not going to get into all of those details, but this is the practice, the application. So we have a maze object, you can see it right here. But now I want to see what can we do to basically grow this application to work with multiple mazes. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Well, the very first thing is that rather than working with a maze, we can actually now work with a list of mazes. So you can use a linked list or you can just use a normal list. I'm Yeah, an array list. I'm going to do that. We're going to go with an array list of type maze and we're just going to call this mazes. And we'll just say new array list of type maze. So multiple mazes can fit in here. So this one, this M, that can go inside of mazes as well as more than just that one. We can put multiple in there. So we will need to import array list from java.util. That's going to pop up up here. And yeah, cool. Now, rather than doing this here, I'm actually going to create the maze inside of main. And this mazes is going to be the access for all of the mazes. So inside of main, I'm going to paste that here. And we don't need that static anymore. So we'll get rid of that. But I am going to add static to this so we can access it throughout our code. That way, I don't have to create an instance of this maze solver class. I can just access it directly on the class. All right, so we have this one maze that we created right here. Let's create another maze. So we'll say maze n new maze. And we'll just copy all this stuff and change the, the letter. So paste that in here and change it from m to n. All right, just something like that. It doesn't have to be anything specific. I'm just changing it just so that we can have two mazes so I can show you guys this example. And I'm gonna unindent all this stuff like that as well as these here, beautiful. So now we have two mazes, maze N and maze M and we can add both of these mazes to this maze list up here. So we'll do that down here after we create both of them and assign them some values. We'll say mazes.add, we'll pass in M, and then we'll do it again, mazes.add and pass in N. I wonder if you can do both at once. Does that work? No, it doesn't work. So we'll just do them separate like that. Great. Now you can see we have an if statement where we're specifically working with M. What if we could loopify this and do it twice first with the first maze and then second with the second maze. And then we wouldn't be working with M, we would be working with mazes, whatever index we're currently working on with the loop. That's what we're gonna try and do. So instead of m.start, what we will do is first create a loop. Let's do that first. We'll do a for loop. No, let's do a while loop, yeah. I feel, I'm feeling a while loop today. And we'll just create an iteration variable I and set that equal to zero. Oh, geez, there we go. And then we'll say while I is less than mazes dot size. And then at the end of the while loop, we'll say I plus plus. And then everything we want to do goes right here. So let's take this code, cut that, and paste it here. Now we need to do some name updating. First, we don't need that semicolon there. So Get rid of that, and then we'll say if solve maze and pass in mazes.get and then pass in i start. So the first iteration, it's going to get the first maze and pass in start for that maze. Then the second iteration, it's gonna do it again, but it'll grab the second maze because i will then have the value of one. So index zero will grab the first maze, and then index one will grab the second maze. So let's take a look at problems. And oh, just 21, no big deal. So basically we have this reference to M everywhere and that's not going to exist anymore.
because we don't have a static m variable anymore. We used to have the maze as a static variable and it was called m. We got rid of that. So now we're working with mazes. But what I think we could do instead is pass in a maze as an argument to the solve maze method and just call it m. So then we wouldn't have to change the name of literally everything. So let's try that. So instead of down here where we have solve maze and we pass in the start position, what if we just passed in the entire maze? Let's try that. So we'll just get rid of dot start, scroll down a little bit. So we'll say position P is equal to, and we're gonna pass this in as M dot start. And then instead of taking a position, we'll just take an entire maze. So we'll say maze M. All right, so that got rid of like 70, 80% of our errors. So that is awesome. And this is not a method. So that's one of our errors. It's actually a variable. I don't know why I made parentheses there. So we're getting that start value from the maze passed in. And we got a couple of other issues, probably from the other method which is down here is valid. So we'll just take in a maze, just like that. And when we call is valid, we'll just pass it on. So what we got up at the top, if we look at the start of solve maze, we'll just take this M and pass it down one more time to the is valid method. So comma M, and we'll just do that for all of the instances. So M, M, M. Now we are getting a couple of other errors. Oh, we got to update the signature for the is valid method. So, no, we did. Uh, maybe just a save. Yep, and the errors went away. So I think when I change the method signature, I just have to do a save so that when we try invoking this, it's referencing like the newest signature. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but sometimes when you save, the errors go away. If you're pretty sure they shouldn't be there, try saving. Okay, so I just did a ton of stuff, rambled off a bunch of different things, and I didn't really super explain everything because I was too in depth with this. So let's just take a step back and take a look at what we did. So let's start at the source. We started with this global maze and this maze was accessed throughout all of this program and that worked. And when I created that at the beginning, I said this might bring some limitations, but it's going to work for our application. It worked, but now we're reaching those limitations. What were those limitations? Well, this entire program was designed around solving one maze. So we were just solving one maze and that was referenced throughout all the code and now we're trying to solve multiple mazes. So as a result, that static or basically a global variable in this context became our weak point because that was referenced throughout all of our code, which is why we had to make a bunch of changes to make this work. So step one is we basically replace that static variable for one maze to now contain multiple mazes. It's a list of mazes. Now when we did that, in order for the different methods to know which maze we want it to do it on, so for example, the solve maze, how does it know which maze to solve? That's exactly why we ended up adding a new parameter to these methods. So we added this maze M to the solve maze, and down at the bottom, in this is valid, we added maze M. So that way we can specify which maze we want it to use. And we limited our use to the static variable up inside of main, which is right here. We limited it to in here where we get the individual mazes from that list. Because of that limitation, we probably don't even need to have this as a static variable anymore. So what we can do is try pasting this inside of main and see if things work out just the same. So we'll paste that there, save, see if we get any new errors. And it looks like we got, well, let's get rid of static first. And look, everything works exactly the same. That's because all of our methods no longer have a reference to that static variable, which is a best practice. We contained that use 
inside of main, so why not just define the variable in main itself? Hopefully that makes sense, but it is a lot of conceptual stuff, so if you don't have it down perfectly, that's fine. Just take a look at the code and I will try to make a commitment to GitHub after this video if I can remember. <laughs> Probably will forget, but it's up there at some point. Then what we did is we created a loop that will go through all of the mazes inside of our, our mazes list and it will pass in that maze to solve maze. Solve maze will do its thing and it will call is valid when necessary, passing that same maze down to it. So lots of changes, but now in theory, we should be able to loop through this list and solve multiple mazes. So let's run it and see what we get. All right, so scrolling up, we get a bunch of different paths and it says you won. And then it does it again and it says no path. Hmm. That's odd because the mazes are exactly the same, right? We just copy pasted these mazes. So what in the world is going on? Well, this might be unrelated, but I did notice that in this assignment, we're assigning the same exact maze and that is why. Yes, that is why because when you update this maze, that's gonna change the value of the maze variable itself. And we currently have two references to that maze. One right here, m.maze, and then another one, n.maze. They're both pointing to the same exact maze. So that is my issue here. We need to actually make sure we're pointing to the correct maze. So now we have a copy of this maze but it's not the same maze itself. It's not the same entity, it just has the same exact layout. We currently have two mazes, I'm not four, just two. <laughs> we have two mazes and they both have the exact same structure. So now let's run it and see what we get. Run, and it looks like we won the second time as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I noticed that because I could see that being an issue with why is this changing the second time around? And just being frustrated for hours on end. So I'm really glad I found that pretty quickly and I'm actually pretty impressed with myself, I'm not gonna lie. So hopefully, in theory, you got a better understanding of how to generalize our program to work with multiple mazes. So now what you could do is you could in theory take input from a file or from a database or from the console of numerous mazes and you could just tell the person if, if it's solvable from a particular starting position. Now that would be really cool because now our program is becoming more useful. I mean, it's still kind of silly, but the same concept could be applied to a lot of different things. You know, maybe in life you're not gonna be solving a maze, but you might be trying to find a path from one starting position to a destination. And that's the kind of stuff, you know, Google Maps and Apple Maps, they are basically doing probably very, very complex variations of something simple like this. They're trying to figure out a path from a start to an end. And not only that, but they try to find the shortest path or one of the shortest paths or the easiest path or whatever their algorithm might be. This is the basis for understanding how something like that works. So although this is silly, it is not useless. This is very valuable content and hopefully you feel like it's bringing value into your life, especially if you're a mouse trying to find some cheese inside of a maze. In that case, I got your back. All right, peace out and check out the next video because I think we're gonna try to read this from input unless I change my mind, which could happen. So I guess we'll find out then. Stay tuned, peace out and subscribe.